So you have a drone, it shoots in D-Log, and you're like, how do I color grade this? Well, here's a quick guide. Here we are in the color page of DaVinci Resolve 18.5, although this will work beautifully with the last few versions of Resolve. And we have some footage shot on the Mavic 3 in D-Log. I'm gonna close a couple of these panels just so that we have some room. I'm gonna close our clips and our gallery and our timeline. So we just have a bigger view of our shot here. And if you're not familiar with the color page in Resolve, make sure to check out this video so that you're not totally lost, but I will go over some of the basics. Basically, when you shoot in D-Log, it shoots in this kind of gray washed out looking footage. The colors aren't bright. There isn't a lot of contrast. If we look at our scopes here, which is a way to graph the brightness of each channel of the image, zero is black, 1023 is pure white. And we have everything kind of squeezed into the middle here in this gray. We don't have anything that's black. We don't have anything that's pure white. If I switch over to the vector scope, which is our hue and our saturation, everything's kind of squished towards the middle because everything is pretty desaturated. So the very best way to color grade this is to start by using color management. Now there are a lot of different ways to do that. The way that I like to do it is to do it in a node in Resolve with a color space transform effect. I'm going to right click and call this transform just so we know what's going on in this node. And I'll go up to my effects and I'm going to scroll down to color space transform right here and drop this onto the transform node. With this node selected over here in the color space transform settings, there are all kinds of little things we need to set. Up here where it says color space transform, we have input color space, input gamma, output color space, and output gamma. These are the main big settings that we need to get right because these top two are what the camera has shot and the bottom two is what our monitor is going to show. So we're transforming these gray and desaturated colors into colors that look realistic. So let's take this input color space and we're gonna go down to DJI D gamut and input gamma, we're gonna go down to DJI D log. That's going to make a big difference already, but we need to set our output color space. And for most of the time, we're gonna just want rec 709 and rec 709. This is going to make it look correct on most computer monitors and televisions. And that's going to give us colors that are a lot closer to what you would expect. Under tone mapping, let's go to luminance mapping, gamut mapping, let's go to saturation compression. I use these settings because I've tested several different kinds of setups here and I like these the best. So if you have D-Log footage shot on one of the more recent DJI drones, this is a great starting point. You can screen capture this if you want to. And we're gonna put that on our color space transform. Now, this color space transform, this node is going to be at the very end of our pipeline here. That means that any adjustments and anything that we do is gonna happen before this node. We want this to be the last step in our process. But ironically, we put it on first because what we're gonna do is make our adjustments with this transform applied. It's just that the adjustments are gonna happen before it in the pipeline, but we're gonna have this on the whole time while we're making those adjustments. Whew, that's hard to explain, I hope that makes sense. So let's make a node before this one. I'll just hit Shift S on the keyboard. That'll make a serial node before this transform node. And usually what I like to do in this node is make this an exposure node. So this is just a regular node that I've labeled by hitting node label and I just type exposure EXP. And that's just to remind myself that all I'm going to do in this node is adjust the brightness of our image. Now I could do any multiple number of things in any of these nodes. I could even do some corrections in my transform node, but just to keep myself organized, I'm gonna stay disciplined and only affect the exposure in this node. And if I wanna do some other stuff, I'm gonna make more nodes after that. So this exposure node, what I'm gonna do is, first I'm gonna to go to this offset right here and adjust this little wheel. This wheel is called the master wheel. And as I push this up under that transform, if I push it up, this image is gonna act like we exposed it up more. And if I take this wheel to the left, it's gonna act like I underexposed it. I can also just mouse over this and roll with my scroll wheel. And so what I wanna do is make sure that this exposure is pretty good. So here's before and here's after. I'm just boosting it up a little bit. That's kind of the first thing grading any image is setting your exposure right. Next thing I'll do is make another node. We could either right click and say add node, add serial, or we can hit Alt S on the keyboard. Now I'm gonna label this saturation, S-A-T slash temp. I like to just keep the saturation and temperature in one node because I feel like they have a pretty good relationship to each other. So at this point, I'm just looking at, okay, how does the saturation look? How are the brightnesses of the colors? And I would say, mm, they could probably go up a little bit. So I'm gonna take the saturation control right here and I'm gonna click and drag to the right so that number starts going up. And I'm gonna boost that just to where it looks a little crazy. And then I'm gonna take it down from there just a touch. So something like that, this is just a little boost in saturation. Here's before and here's after, just boosting that up a little bit. 
I also at this point want to see if the colors are balanced. That is, do white things look white? Do black things look black? And we have all these white boats and everything here. And I'd say for the most part, white looks pretty white. It doesn't look too off. There's nothing obviously wrong with this shot. So that looks pretty good. Next thing I'll do is I'll hit Alt S and make another serial node, right click, and we'll label this contrast. This is the one that's gonna make a big difference. Now you can add contrast a few different ways to a image in Resolve. One thing you can do is go to your primary color wheels right here, grab this contrast and just drag it to the right. That's gonna add some contrast and that'll do pretty good. I can even grab this pivot control, which kind of adjusts the way this contrast acts if I push it to the left, more things become bright. If I push it to the right, more things become dark. And so it's kind of adjusting what it thinks the difference is, the, the threshold between bright and dark. So I think maybe I'll push this to the left a little bit. And so here's before and here's after. We're getting a little hot in the highlights there. So I might just go back to my exposure and take this offset down a touch, just so we have that nice deep contrast here, but we're not completely crushing out these clouds. And we have a pretty nice looking shot here. So here's without the contrast adjustment, and here's with it, here's without the saturation, and here's with it, and here's without the exposure, and here's with it. So we're not really doing a whole lot to the exposure. Yeah, basically just reset that. So why don't we just go ahead and reset that? Not every shot needs everything adjusted about it. This exposure is pretty good. So that's kind of the main adjustment that I would make to correct this image. So here's the image just in D-Log without any adjustments. Here it is with only the color space transform. So that does a lot of the work for us. It fixes a lot of the contrast. It fixes a lot of the color stuff, but it doesn't necessarily look good. This is just the most accurate representation of what the camera saw on that day. So to make this look a little nicer, we can turn on our saturation and temperature and our contrast to really kind of boost this up and make that look a little nicer. You could also adjust the contrast with the curve here. So I could reset my contrast and pivot with this little button right here. And I could kind of dial in my contrast with an S curve, and that's a nice way to do it as well. Then you have a little bit more control over exactly what parts get dark and what parts get bright. And depending on the look you're going for, that might be a better way to do it. But once you have your image looking pretty good, then you can get a little bit more detailed. So what I like to do is add another node. I'll just hit Alt S for a serial node. And I'll right click this and we'll call this secondary one. And this is going to be a secondary correction. All these so far have been primary corrections. That means a correction that's over the entire image. A secondary correction is only affecting part of the image. That's either a certain color tone or a certain brightness or a certain physical area of the image. So for instance, maybe I wanna adjust this sky. Well, I can limit what happens in this node with a window, let's say maybe a gradient window. So I can just go down here to this windows palette and click on this gradient right here. When it turns red, then we have this little tool that pops up and as I adjust things in this node, let's say I just make it super purple, it's going to be fully on on this side of the line and it's gonna fade out along this arrow. So that's great for skies because I can put this kind of in the sky like this and fade it down on the horizon. And even with this super intense purple look, it almost looks natural, right? Not quite, but almost. I'll click this little reset. And now let's do whatever we're actually gonna do. Maybe I'll just take this gamma down a little bit just to darken that blue in that sky. Maybe I'll push the saturation up a touch. And so now we just have this subtle adjustment to the sky. So here's before and here's after. We're putting in a little bit of that blue and that's a soft enough window and the sky stays close enough to where it is that we can probably just leave it like that. And yeah, that looks pretty nice. It's always a good idea to play through the shot, make sure that you like the whole thing. And I think that looks pretty nice. Another thing we might wanna do is adjust the color of this water, which we can do with another secondary. This time I'll select the secondary and I'll hit Alt P. That's gonna make a parallel node. And without getting too complicated, a parallel node just adjusts something at the same time from the same input image. And long story short, if you're doing a bunch of little adjustments to the image, it helps them blend together better. Sometimes you'll see a big difference between a serial node and a parallel node, and sometimes you won't. But it's generally a safer option to go with a parallel node. And we'll just say secondary two. This time we're gonna adjust the water, which I'll do with the curves. So here at the curves palette, this second little icon here is hue versus hue. And I can grab some of the water, I'll just click and drag, and that's going to set some control points here. And I can take this and I can move this up and down to adjust the hue of the water. 
So maybe I'll push that down to make it kind of a little bit more green. I'll maybe push the control points out even more. So now that we're adjusting that water color, it starts green, ends up kind of blue. I actually like it maybe that kind of green. Maybe I won't take it quite towards that bluish purple, maybe just a little bit more teal than green. So here's before and here's after, okay? And that's adjusting anything on the screen that is this kind of greenish color. And maybe we want a little bit more of this yellow too. I can take this yellow, kind of move it this way. So that blends together a little better, yeah. That looks nice. So now we're adjusting the sky, we're adjusting the water, and there we end up with a pretty nice shot. So again, here it is with no corrections. Here it is with just the color space transform and my saturation, my contrast, my sky, and my water. Doing this kind of color grading is so much fun. If you want to learn more about the process of color grading, we have a class for that. It's called Pro Color Grading in DaVinci Resolve. It's available now at groundcontrol.film. Make sure to check it out. Big thanks to Jacob Shumway for providing the footage for this tutorial. I hope this helps you make your drone footage look amazing. Until next time, I hope you fly safe and fly true, like an arrow meeting its mark. I don't know. It's something something Lord of the Rings probably.